Greetings friends, welcome to A Shot of Code. Today we're going to create a web component using plain old JavaScript, so no libraries and no frameworks. This should give us an appreciation of what's going on under the hood in a web component, and also what those libraries and frameworks actually provide for us, which is quite a lot. You know, web, the web component spec is quite a low level spec, so you'll see there's quite a lot of boilerplate and ceremony involved in creating this just using vanilla JavaScript. Uh, before we jump in, if you find yourself enjoying this video, uh, feel free to click that subscribe below and the alert bell icon to get notifications of upcoming videos. Let's jump in though. Um, going to create a very simple counter, very simple counter component just using JS. Let's see how we get on. Okay, so I'm going to create a counter JS file here and I'll make it a bit bigger. So we'll have a class, uh, my counter, and we need to extend HTML element. So that gives us quite a bit of web component functionality and life cycle for free. Let's create a constructor and call the base class. Now, what we need to do here is create our shadow DOM. So this is the encapsulated part of our web component. It's the bit where styles from outside the component can't leak in and styles can't leak out as well. So any of your CSS, uh, you're not going to get any naming conflicts. Right, so what we call is attach shadow. And we just pass in an object with some options of mode, just mode. And the reason for this one is you can have mode as closed or open, and it just means whether you can access this uh, Shadow DOM via JavaScript in your components. You're always going to want this open. Um, yeah. We'll see. We're, we're going to be using that when we try and attach the events to this component as well. Okay. So we've got a Shadow DOM. We can add some UI into this Shadow DOM now. So in our render function, I can grab this dot shadow and I can grab its inner HTML. Now, here's something straight away that uh, a library or framework is going to abstract away from you. It's going to allow you to add your UI in, in a much more efficient, maintainable, usable manner. You, using inner HTML is going to cause us problems. Even in this little simple example, it will cause us problems with the event handlers. Um, in a in a more complex scenario, you're going to have problems with it being slow. You're going to have problems uh, update. It's just, yeah, you don't want to be using it in a HTML. But unless we're going to now essentially write um, a framework ourselves or a library, then this is what we're going to have to use. So we'll see the problems with it. Um, let's... Let's put a title in here of counter, like so, and we'll we'll display our count. So we haven't got a property count at the moment. That will just come out as undefined when we view this, but that's fine for the moment. We'll create a button and give it an ID so I can reference it later, and we'll call that increment like so. So that just gives us a very simple UI there. Uh, we've got nothing calling this render at the moment, so we wouldn't get it displayed. So here comes the first lifecycle event in a web component. We have connected callback. So because we're inheriting from HTML element, just going to make it slightly smaller so we can see this, um, we can override connected callback. And when our element is added to the page, we will get this call. Uh, so we can simply call render at that point and we'll get something up on the screen. All right. Now to register this custom element, we need to call custom elements, whoops, custom elements dot define. And we need to pass in a custom element name. So we're going to use my counter. Now note, we need a hyphen in there. That's so that this custom element will not conflict with any existing HTML tags like your button, your div, your body, your HTML, anything like that. None of those have a hyphen in. That's why we use a hyphen. That means we won't conflict now. And 
we won't conflict with any new HTML tags that come in in a, in a future HTML release. Okay, and we pass in our class as well. So that sets us up, and that means we can use this tag now in a HTML page as long as we include this script. So let's give that a go. I'll create an index HTML, and we shall add in here my counter, and we'll add the script that gives us its functionality which is counter.js. So I should be able now, if I open this up with a live server, to be able to see that. And there we go, I'll get rid of that one there. So we have got, if I go back here, we've got our counter, which is our header here. We've got undefined, which is fair for our count property. We haven't defined that yet. And a button, that does nothing at the moment. Let's look then at setting up this property. What we would like, because uh, this will show us how to sync properties and attributes. Um, and on that note, an attribute is when we set something up on the tag here in the page. So if I do count equals 10 here, this is an attribute. And it has a corresponding property within our JavaScript. So attributes on the tag, properties in the JavaScript. So we want to be able to set this count up here. What do we need to do? Nothing. Nothing's happening at the moment. Count is still undefined. We need to say in here which properties, which attributes we're going to be using. And we want to use the count one. Now to do this, we set a static get method called observed attributes. Now this is static because it will be across all instances. All instances of my counter will be interested in the count property. Um, things like, uh, so it's not an on, on an instance by instance, it's global. That's why, it's, uh, that's why it's a static one. And we just need to return in here an array of them. And we're only interested in one. We're only interested in count. But, you know, you could have um, various other properties on here if you wanted. But for now, we'll just have the count. So, this tells the system, yeah, we want to observe the count. But we also then need to provide another callback so that when count changes, we can do what we want to do. And we do that similar to connected callback. We're going to override another lifecycle method. And this one is called um, attribute changed callback. And this one takes three properties. It takes the name of the attribute that changed. We'll call it prop. Um, the old value and the new value. So these can be named anything you want. You can name that value as long as they're in that order. That's fine. So in here, we're going to say, all right, has the attribute or property in a property attribute, same thing, but yeah, different. Um, if the property is equal to count, then let's update our component. Now, the reason we're not storing away the new value here is, is what I'm going to show you now. We want to keep the attributes and the properties in sync. Now, the easiest way to do this is have one golden source. So rather than creating an, a, a property on here, and giving that a value, we're going to create a property on here using getters and setters, and the value it returns will be the attribute value. So let me show you how that works. Um, let's make it a little smaller again. So if we want to get the count, so we've got a getter here for the count, what we're actually going to do is return this dot get attribute and get the value of that attribute. So it's gonna come in here and grab that value. So that's our golden copy. This way, we're not gonna get any problems when we have set count as well. Because in here, we're literally gonna do uh, this dot set attribute. And we're gonna set the count attribute to a new value, which gets passed in here, like so. If we've got two properties, 
we can get into a situation where we set it and we get into an internal loop with attribute changed. This way, we're only ever setting or getting the attribute value and then we're using that internally in our account. So you can see over here now, we're getting the value 10 coming up because this is all set up. We've set and we said, yep, we want to know about count when it changes. When count changes, we call render. Render accesses the count property, which will come to this get and call get attribute count. So I can come in here now and give that the value 20 and that will update. Now, <clears throat> that did a full page refresh. Um, so that 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 route is it comes into here and we call render render calls this count and that calls get and get attribute but that won't work well this will work at the moment but it, it didn't use these these become useful when we update this property uh, via code on the page let me show let, let's let's see let's see that in action so if i grab my button well grab the counter actually sorry so let's give this an id of counter and if we say if counter is um so we want to get hold of the counter like so and then if we do a set attribute for count and we set it to 100 and let's put this inside a function update like so and we'll add a quick button on here and hook that up to update. So what have we got now? We've got, I'm just trying to make a bit more space there. We've got a button that is gonna call this function, which will grab a reference of our button and change the attribute to 100. Okay, so I'm gonna save that off and call update. And it works. It works there because we're getting a call into this attribute changed callback. And we've said we want to observe changes. If we weren't looking at count, if we were looking at counter, and I come back in here, give this a refresh and do update, it's no longer updating it. Yep, so yeah, it worked when we did a page refresh, but to get it to work programmatically, you need to have attribute changed callback and observed attributes all set up correctly. So I'll put that back to count, click update, goes to 100, okay. Let's let's get rid of that. We don't we don't need that anymore. We don't need that. So we're back to our normal counter with the increment not working. Let's have a look now. So that, that was all about syncing from changes here to this attribute. What about changes made to the property in our JavaScript? We need to hook this up. Now because we're using in a HTML, it's a little bit more complicated because I can't add the event handler here. So I'm going to add the event handler after we've created it here. Um, so I'm going to get hold of the button. I can, I can use the ID here to get hold of the button. So let's do button equals. Um, now to access the, um, the DOM, we need to use our shadow reference again. This dot shadow, and then we can just do a normal query selector and grab the button and then i want to grab i want to i want to add an event listener to this button and i want it to be for the click event and when that happens i want to call our method to increment it so let's just create an ink here say this dot count plus plus and we're going to call this dot ink we get into the world of this and bind here. Um, I'm not going to try try and go into this too much here, but basically you're going to need to do a bind to this in order for this to work. That was the word this a lot. It's a whole area. It was good.
we can look up a video on that at some point if, if you want to get into binding in this but th by putting that there it means this will get called for us um okay that looks pretty good the problem we'll have is whenever we call render we'll place a whole new inner html in and that will ruin our um, listener so i'm going to copy this and also put it in here so there's way better ways to do this but you know you've got to you've got to know how to do them and you're essentially doing the library you know what you do is start to write the code that's in a library that does this for you um, okay so let's save that off and give it a click and that is going up correctly which is good if I look in the tools here just make it a bit bigger we can see our count is going up to 25 26 so it's, it's updating the attribute and that is our golden copy of, of, of that value that sync between the attributes and the properties so that's a fair little bit of code and that's for one property one method um, yeah if you're gonna if you're gonna make a complex component you don't really want to be getting into this you want to include a lit element or uh, use felt or stencil or or view or react or, or you know whatever um, you don't want to be doing you don't want to be doing this it's gonna it's gonna be hard to maintain it's just gonna be inefficient it's gonna be slow you're gonna get problems um, but but it's good to have an understanding of the flow the life cycle events this connected callback the attribute changed callback um, the observed attributes and setting up that your shadow DOM and, and and how that works and then the, you know the problems with it there uh, so there you go um, <clears throat> a web component um, in vanilla JS hope that was good uh, if you like this video give me a thumbs up uh, if not a thumbs down but and feel free to subscribe for more upcoming videos thanks very much for watching see you next time bye